remember, respect is everything. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and are staying safe. Today we're going to look at something a little different, something that I've been wanting to look at for a while. I normally don't review any of my Lego cars or anything like that, mostly because there's not much to talk about with these vehicles, but this one's kind of special. This is the 58 Plymouth Fury from the movie Christine. The movie Christine pretty much centers around a nerdy kid who pretty much gets his ass kicked by everybody around him. Jocks, bullies, and, any, and even women at times. But he has one good friend, Dennis Gilder, who is a pretty much your average jock, but is a very nice and well-rounded young man. He's played by John Stockwell, who appears in Top Gun and... I'm sure of a variety of other films that I can't think of at the top of my head. It started as a book written by Stephen King and then eventually was um, given a movie adaptation in 1983 by John Carpenter. In the book, the car was a four-door sedan, but in the movie, they changed it to a two-door, but it was more or less the same vehicle. Although, from what I've heard, the sedan variant wasn't available till 1959, at least for the Fury. However, I could be wrong and... I'm sure there's plenty of websites with um, information and things and such. But in the book, it was a, it was a four-door. In the movie, it is a two-door coupe. At one point in the movie, all the bullies that tormented him that he got kicked out of school, they all came back for revenge and destroyed his beloved automobile. But little did he realize that car had supernatural powers and could rebuild itself at will and as well as control itself. So whenever Arnold was asleep or busy doing other things, at the late hours of the night, Christine would go and track down all the people that tormented her and Arnold. Now, uh, Arnold Cunningham is played by Keith Gordon, who also appeared in Jaws 2, and uh, I think also wrote some episodes of Dexter, but I could be wrong. If you've ever seen the TV show Dexter, you should know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but yes... This one is based off the movie counterpart, as this is the only way we ever really saw it outside of the book. But in technicality, it should be a four-door sedan, but because the movie was the first introduction that I had to Christine, I decided to go with the two-door coupe. One of the um, trickiest parts of this model was um, pretty much the general uh, nature of the back wheels. You see, 50s automobiles were very large. And uh, as you can see here, this is one of my bigger Lego cars that I've constructed. But yes, I did the best I could to recreate the vehicle that was seen in the film. Again, if any details or inaccuracies are present, please forgive them as this was a tough car to replicate. The car does feature an opening hood, which shows some of the engine detailing. And aside from that, there's really not much else to say. But yes, Christine here is a 58 Plymouth Fury, and um, in the movie and in the book, he restores the car, you know, through the means of a junkyard, which also has its in-house shop, where people can go in and repair their cars themselves, um, and granted, they have the money to do so, and rent tools, and um, pretty much a do-it-yourself garage, with, with catches, obviously. Now, what made this car so special is, you know, obviously in the book and movie, the car was, you know, supernatural, so it could drive itself and, you know, rebuild itself anytime it got destroyed, and it was pretty much an unstoppable murder machine. However, at the end of the film, the car was crushed with a bulldozer and met its end after it accidentally killed the, the person it was trying to claim all to herself, which was Arnold Cunningham the man who restored Christine, and ironically, she accidentally kills him near the end of the movie, trying to kill his ex-girlfriend and his best friend. Throughout the movie, Arnold Cunningham slowly adapts very odd behaviors, and through some cases becomes a little more passive-aggressive and downright just insane. His outfit and general appearance also changes throughout the movie. He starts out with a generic nerdy look, but throughout the movie... He gains a very um, kind of 50s style greaser look. And then at the end of the movie, he looks pretty much lifeless. Like whatever was left of the original Arnold Cunningham was gone and has a very possessed presence. Unfortunately, he met his end 
at the hand of his beloved automobile. Uh, the book was much longer than the actual film was, but obviously because there was so much content in the book, it's very clear that they couldn't include everything due to runtime. There were 25 minutes of deleted scenes, but nothing super important, but there were some scenes that I wish they had left in, such as Arnold Cunningham's breakdown, as well as um, some minor scenes that um, made the film have a little more depth to it. Here's the Arnold Cunningham figure that I made for this car. Um, however, um, I did the best I could. I chose this face because it pretty much has that kind of dead stare look that he had in the movie. Uh, if I can get it to focus. But yeah, it kind of has that possessed dead stare that he has in the film. And this outfit particularly is based on his... Um, red jacket and black pants outfit that he is seen wearing through some parts of the movie but because it's a movie and it, it takes place over the course of a few months he obviously changes outfits uh now and then and his appearance does change quite a bit as he ditches his glasses and many other things to make himself look a little more cleaner and a lot more slick but yes as you can see here is the minifigure based on that particular outfit he wore in the film and uh that's pretty much all there is to it um, aside from that, he does fit in the car, and if I can just uh, get him in there. Speaking of the car, here's the interior of said vehicle. Nothing special, obviously. Um, I did the best I could with the limited resources I had at hand, but he does fit in the car, and he fits in there just fine. And like I showed earlier, the hood does open, revealing the engine, which apparently had a some kind of dual air filter carburetor setup. Again, um, my knowledge of automobiles only goes so far. As much as I love cars, I'm not the best when it comes to actually explaining the mechanical nature of them. But I'm pretty happy with how this model turned out. Oh, before we go, though, um, I was playing GTA V, and uh, for the month of October... There was a Halloween event where if you're driving around between, uh, I want to say 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. in game time, obviously, Christine will appear out of nowhere and try to attack you if you get out of your vehicle. And yeah, I got the, the worst end of it and uh, it didn't go well. Alrighty, you all have a good night, have a happy Halloween, stay safe, and you all have a good one.